Hey everyone. So I kind of want to go back to this ClickUp solution here that we did a little while ago. Just to kind of recap, we use the ClickUp API to get our data where we get the task name and then the tag. And then we used AutoML to use that data to create a model where we can predict what tag we want from our task name. And then we created a web API, which gets called from our webhook and that takes a task name, well, it takes the task ID, then gets the task name, and then runs that in the prediction engine to get the prediction. And then if the prediction has a score greater than 60%, it adds the tag to that task. But the thing is, in order to update this model, this auto ML model, I have to run all this kind of manually, even to update the web API because I have the model embedded. I would have to run all this again to update it to get a to get a better model because uh, I use ClickUp quite often and so there's going to be more task names and thus more data for me to use. So what we can do is kind of automate this a bit. The first thing is we'll come back I'll uncomment this and then I'll I'll remove this webhook call because we don't need that anymore. And what we can do here is because this writes a CSV file we can upload this to Azure storage, Azure blob storage, and then we can create a an Azure function and that serves as a blob trigger on our container. And whenever it sees a new file, it will automatically run this auto ML code and then it'll put this new model into Azure blob storage. And then we can come back into our web API and instead of using from a file we can use from our blob storage. All right, so the first thing is in our data project here, uh, let's reference the NuGet package for our blob storage here. Using the microsoft.azure.storage.blob package, we'll install that. There you go. And then similar to what we have in our ClickUp API key, I'm going to do something similar and use that for our storage connection and I already have that here and I have it called storage connection so that's where we can get that connection there so after we write our task CSV file we can create a storage account here using cloud storage account and parse out the storage connection then we get a storage client and let's make this a little bit bigger it's storage client using storage that create cloud blob client and then we get a reference to our container using the storage client get container reference and I'm going to call the container clickup and then we get a file reference from the container using get block blob reference and it's going to be called task.csv and then we can await the file ref dot upload from file async and we already have that CSV path so we can use that so once we get it it'll upload the test at CSV into our blob storage thing and we need a way to run kind of run this on our own put on our own for for debugging person for testing purposes, but also we need a way to kind of run this automatically. So what we can do is on our project, click publish. Now I'm going to target this to a folder instead of Azure. There we go. And just continue talking to a folder. I'm just going to go into this publish folder there. I'll click finish and then publish. There we go. So we let's try to go to this folder. It's in the bin. Let's see release, publish, and then we have an exe here. So let's run this. We got that finished, so we should be able to go 
to our storage explorer here. I'm going to click up container. Let's refresh. And there's our task CSV file right there. So now that we have our data set in Azure Blob Storage, we can create a new project. It's going to be an Azure function project. And we call it ClickUp function. And it's going to be a blob trigger. So this function will detect on any blob container. If a new file comes in there, it will trigger this function. And for our storage account, we're going to browse to our storage. And we'll leave the connection string empty and it'll take the default. Our path is pretty much our what container name that we want to use. So we use ClickUp. Now we'll rename this function to ClickUp Retrain. And our and our connection will put in Azure Web Jobs Storage. And that'll be here in our local settings. And just to give this a little test, we'll run this. We'll set it as the startup project. I will delete this file from our storage. All right, so let's run this just to make sure that the trigger runs. All right, so this is running. Let's run this publish for our data here. All right, that ran. So it takes a couple of seconds for the trigger to detect a new file. There we go. So it detected and I got our task at CSV here. So we'll just close this for now. And what we want to mainly do is bring in our auto ML code. So I'll just take all of this and put it into our function. And we need our context. And if we don't need our prediction engine, but we do need our task input, so we can just copy this and paste it in here. When we do this, we need to change the namespace. All right, so next let's bring in the auto ML package here. So go to NuGet, Microsoft.ml, and we go down, and Microsoft.ml.autoML. We'll bring that in, and that brings in ML.net as well as a dependency. All right, so now we can bring in our context here, new ML context, and then bring in auto ML namespace. We don't need this load from text file because we don't have a text file. We just have this stream of our blob content. So what we can do, we can read this in. So we create a new blob data variable. It's going to be an empty string. And then to read this stream using statements, so using a reader, and that reader is going to be a new stream reader, taking in the blob stream in the constructor. And then we just set the blob data string to reader dot read to end. So that gives us our data from our blob. Now we need to parse this string data into that task input class. So we do parse data equals blob data. And we use some link magic here. So we'll split on a return carriage and a new line. Since that comes in as a string, we're going to skip the first item, which is going to be the header. And we'll select each line. And then for each line, we'll split on our delimiter, which is going to be a comma. And we'll take while each row is not null or white space. And then we'll select each row into a new task input. And then here we do task name. It's going to be the first item in the row. And then the tags are going to be the second item in the row. All right, now with that, in order to get our add data view to use with auto ML, we can use our context data and load from enumerable and pass in that parse data. And now we can use that data down here. All right, so we have our, our model now and we're saving it. And when we run this in the function, it's gonna save wherever this function saves. But we need to have access to this model. So what we can do is we can get the 
that Azure blob package again. And what was it Microsoft Azure storage blob? So we bring that down. And then down here, we do storage equal cloud storage account. That parse. And we need a connection string here. Now, since we are using a blob trigger, we have this connection. We can actually have access to that connection. We can bring in the config using a new configuration builder. And we can set the base path to our function app directory. But how do we get access to that? Put in a new parameter in our run method here. And it's going to be our execution context. Execution context. And with that execution context, I can call this function app directory property on it. And then we we'll add JSON file. And that's going to be the local settings that JSON. Do optional true reload on change true. And I say add environment variables. And then we'll build on that. So we have our access to our config items here. We can create a blob connection by using config.get section of your web jobs storage, which is the same connection string that we have up here. Then down here, we can call blob connection that value to get the value of that config item. And then the steps are going to be the same as what we did before. Create a storage client with the storage dot create blob client and get the container using the client get container reference. This is going to be the models container. Then get a model ref from the container. Get blob blob reference. It's going to be the click up model dot zip. And then we'll do model ref that upload from file and be click up model that zip. So this is gonna triggered by the, our data file. It's gonna run auto ML and then it'll save our best model to blob storage here. So let's run this and make sure that works correctly. And we'll resend this file up here to our data up here. So I'll delete this. Make sure this is running. So that's running and let's run this data program here. So that finished. Double check, that's there. So this should break point in a sec. There we go. So it finds that. So let's debug through here and make sure it parses our data correctly. So we'll run to cursor. It goes like we got our parsed data correctly. And see, so we're running for was it five minutes, I think. So let's just continue this and let this run. All right, so I put a breakpoint here just to let me know when the training's finished. So we have our model that saved our model. So let's continue this. And then let's go to our models file. And there we go. There's our model. It loaded up. It's saved to Azure Storage correctly. So now that we have our model in Azure Storage, uh, what do we do next? Well, next, and let's stop this. Next, we come down here into our API project here in our startup. We have, when we add our prediction engine pool, we tell it from a file, but we don't need to do that anymore. Now we can say from URI, and it doesn't have a watch for changes on it. And to get the URI here, I can right click, select the properties, and here's the URL. And so I can take this and just put the URL in here. And so it'll get from this URL now. And because of that, I don't need this ML model reference in my project anymore. And there we go. And the final thing is I can republish this back up to Azure. There we go. So that's done. I think this was was it, a, was it API model. Uh, what was it? I already forgot what the controller was. API ClickUp. 
There we go. So our get is working. So we know that that worked correctly. And so that's pretty much how you can, or how I can kind of quote unquote retrain, even though I'm not really retraining, I'm just training from scratch. But honestly, I don't, I know I'm not going to have that much data and I'm manually setting how much time to train with the experiment time in seconds. So, and that's okay. I can reduce this or put it up as much as I want. But if I really want to make this automated, what I can do is for this publish here that pretty much drives everything. Whenever a new item gets put up into blob storage, I can run something called task scheduler in windows here, or you can do a cron job in Linux and then I already have one set up. So I call it click up the trigger, which is uh, right now is monthly first day of the month and it just starts that program that exe that we have so it just executes that once a month and if you want to give ClickUp a try i do have a, an affiliate link in the description ClickUp does have a, a nice free tier so definitely give it a try if you want to use it for your projects or just managing a to-do list all right so that's kind of a i think a cool way to automate this ClickUp automation i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching